Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. It's great to have you uh, with us. If you're just uh, joining us, we're broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios. We're brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. Uh, we just got off the phone last segment with Kim Bennett, mm-hmm. who gave us uh, uh, her uh, perspective uh, as an insurance agent concerning uh, the story, the story you ask, uh, the uh, the killing of 17-year-old Trevon Martin by a uh, neighborhood watch captain by the name of George Zimmerman, age 28, who also happened to live in an HOA. They, this occurred in an HOA, yep. and so we're talking about in, insurance liability or risk liability yeah. for the association, and we also want to talk about legal ramifications. Yeah. And, and I think for us, the reason we thought it was important to bring up is because in this beginning uh, story from the Herald Tribune from Sarasota, Florida, uh, dated March 23rd here, uh, it, I think, uh, gives... Uh, a sort of an alarmist attitude, yeah. um, telling the people living in an HOA, boy, you better be uh, careful because you know uh, this DNO insurance is going to cover uh, the board. The board, but uh, if you're a volunteer and something bad happens and uh, people end up getting sued, you're just the you're not covered. homeowner. You're in trouble. And we learned from Kim that that's not exactly true. Yes. If you're directed by the board of directors, if you mm-hmm. are a volunteer that's been assigned by the board of directors or on a committee, they've told you what they want you yeah. to do, you're covered yeah. if, there, if something goes wrong. So we also want to get another perspective on this uh, story. We want to get a, a legal uh, perspective, and so we, of course, like to turn to uh, the law firm of Helmuth and Johnson. And with us now on the show is uh, Principal David Helmuth of Helmuth and Johnson. Hi, David. Hello, Gene. How are you? Good. Good afternoon. Good. Thanks for uh, taking and some Tony? time to be with us. Yes, I, I very much appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Now you've, uh, of course, uh, heard this uh, story uh, this this week about uh, the killing of this uh, this young uh, gentleman. Um, it uh, this guy was in an HOA in a volunteer. Uh, but another story, and I don't know if you have any other information uh, too, uh, David, to share with us. Uh, uh, this gentleman, this George Zimmerman, apparently was. Uh, acting uh, out of bounds from what uh, even the police were, uh, I guess, uh, cautioning him to do. Because it seems like he, uh, in the second story, he uh, said that he called 911. He was uh, saying that he was uh, following this person. And uh, 911 said, uh, hey, uh, you don't have to do that. We they advised don't, him not to follow. Yeah, we don't the need person. you to to do this. Uh, and uh, but he was acting on his own. Is that what you've heard from uh, from uh, further stories this week as well? Well, um, I did read the uh, Herald Tribune story from the uh, from Sarasota, and I also read the Florida Sun Sentinel. Mm-hmm. I believe the. The Florida Sun Sentinel story is the one you're referring to mm-hmm. that talks about, and so my my information is limited to what is in that article. But I would say that you're absolutely correct uh, in that, according to that story, uh, they did take a look at the 911 call information and determined that this uh, neighborhood watch captain. Uh, was essentially acting on their own. Yeah, and went against what the nine one one people recommended. Mm-hmm. So, and the, and you might be thinking, well, how does this impact the association? Exactly. And that's what I'm here to talk about. Mm-hmm. So, if you know what the associations uh, in general have to be careful about, and I think you know there's some suggestions in these stories that they should do a little due diligence. It sounds like this particular association was not uh, technically enrolled in any kind of neighborhood watch program. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like they had any training for neighborhood watch. Mm-hmm. And so there are organizations out there that uh, would do the training and would come in, and it sounds to me like they just kind of created their own neighborhood watch program. Yeah, that's how it sounds to me as well. 
and turn this guy loose. And then so what's going to happen invariably is the association or, you know, the family probably of this now deceased uh, uh, person who was, and it sounded like he was just visiting his father who yeah. lives within the association, yeah. uh, is going to probably look for liability at the association. Yeah. And the association will have defenses, of course. You know, they are going to say that, well, we never knew he carried a firearm and right. we didn't certainly didn't authorize him to uh, exercise deadly force within our community. Right. Uh, and uh, certainly had we known these things, we would uh, have not uh, had any affiliation with him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll be, they'll, they have defenses. And then, mm -hmm. you know, there are some protections, not only to the board of directors, but also to this uh, individual who was involved. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, you mentioned the insurance. Uh, you know, I would argue that if he's a na the captain of the Neighborhood Watch program, he's on a committee, and mm -hmm. that committee should be entitled to insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in addition, uh, there's a Volunteer Protection Act that protects volunteers against liability. Yeah, I'd like you to go... Is that a federal act? Yes, there's a federal Volunteer Protection Act that provides protection to volunteers uh, who serve without compensation for... Uh, nonprofit boards, uh -huh. which would be the case most likely here. Now, um, in looking at that, you know, it may not extend to an exercise of force or an exercise of activity yeah. outside of their role. Yeah. So, one of the things the association, unfortunately, is in the position of is, is to some extent distancing, distancing themselves from the neighborhood watch captain. And they have to essentially say, we didn't authorize him yeah. to do those types of things, nor did we know he was going to do that. Yeah. So I, I, uh, in something like this, have you heard of any kind of uh, story similar where the association has uh, fallen into some uh, serious liability uh, that uh, they had to be responsible for that really was uh, beyond uh their jurisdiction or anything that they ever authorized? Are you aware of anything, David? I'm not aware of any community association cases uh, that are similar to this particular case. Uh, however, there are, you know, there are corporate examples that we see from time to time. You know, if you take an example of a local case of, say, you know, Tom Petters or. Uh, you know, or Denny Hecker, uh -huh. they go out and they engage in activities uh, for their own personal interest that is maybe outside of their role as being part of a corporation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to have some individual liability. And, you know, what may happen to this particular watch captain is he may be facing a prosecution, yeah. you know, for his activities. And the prosecution, you know, the criminal prosecution in my view, it would be highly unlikely that anybody on the board of directors would be charged with any type of criminal offense uh -huh. other than this committee volunteer person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, they're going to say, well, we didn't condone him sure. to do that type of thing. I, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there's nothing recorded in the minutes about using deadly force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, yeah the, if there okay. is, that's a whole other story. That's right. Yeah. Then we got a, some more topics to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every, every case starts with a set of facts. There you go. You need to analyze, and and we don't have all of the facts, but we do have two newspaper articles that we've all read. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I and you know, as uh, stories unfold, I mean, that's I guess one of the things that uh, everybody's going to be watching for: what new fact is going to is going to come out that mm -hmm. uh, uh, wasn't known before, and mm -hmm. it'll all it will all make sense. But uh, from the perspective of a homeowner association saying, boy, we need to be careful about having the use of volunteers because if one of them acts in a crazy manner, uh, we're just we opening, might get sued. We're yeah. opening ourselves up. Uh, you're here to say that uh, what would they, you say? Ca they can uh, relax and, and not necessarily be uh, alarmed. Well, I think they have to proceed with caution, and I, you know, I think the article, as you guys are, are feeling, was maybe a little too strong in that regard. Mm -hmm. But what I would suggest, 
for you know for, as a learning lesson for any community association leaders is that if they're going to have a watch program that they should probably affiliate with someone who does some training uh -huh. and they probably should set some guidelines and protocols for example yeah. i don't think you know people should be carrying around uh, firearms who are patrolling the association yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, they have a legal right to do that, but if they're going to use it in connection with their role as a community association watch person, uh, they're not trained to do that. Right. And That's that, right. You know, and so there could be, you know, and, and even if the association was determined to not be at fault, they might still be facing an expensive lawsuit uh, where they get sued under a theory of uh, rep uh, respondeat superior where they're kind of almost like an employment context. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. They, you know, you sue the agent as well as the principal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so they may, you know, there may yeah. be liability there. So they have to develop a policy and okay. be careful as to how they uh, implement these programs. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, David, thanks so much for taking some time to be with us and to share your perspective on this story. We always uh, appreciate uh, your common sense. Well, thank you so much, and you guys have a great rest okay. of the day. Thanks, David. You too. Bye that now. was David Helmuth from Helmuth & Johnson. Folks, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we've got one more segment and one more story to wrap it up on today on Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Back after this. <laughs> 